Hi, welcome to this tutorial. We're going to be looking at types of cameras and camera settings that will help you get really good quality scans. Quick reminder of the other video tutorials. There's a couple before this one, one on environment, one on lighting setup and a couple more, one on scanning the subject and preparing the subject for a scan and another on basic analysis of the biofield. There's lots of information in the user manual which you can download from the home page on our website biofieldimaging.com. Just click on the image that you'll see on the home page. We've got quite a lot of information on cameras in various places. Have a read of the user manual section on camera setup. You can watch the online course training videos 1 and 2 and there's lots in there about camera positioning. You can also see the product page on biofieldimaging.com and if you go down the page you'll see a PDF which is downloadable. It's called Suitable Cameras. There's lots of practical tips in there for uh, testing whether your video can, camera can live stream. Also information about firewire ports for your laptop and connections if you've got an analog video camera so it's worthwhile having a look there you can also have a look at the comprehensive tutorial which comes with your biofield reader system not only does it tell you how to navigate around the program but there's also a section in there on cameras so biofield reader program is quite versatile it can process live stream video source that can be from digital or analog video cameras, video recording stored on your computer or tape, and also still camera photos and images on your computer. At the bottom we've got an example of three types of camera you can use. On the left here we've got a webcam and we recommend the Logitech C920 HD Pro because it's got lots of useful functions and by adjusting the settings you can get some really good quality scans. Also you can use still digital camera or a mini DV camcorder. It can be a bit daunting when you first set out with your scanning and you'll wonder which camera to use. So I'm just going to run through some um, pluses and points to consider of different cameras. Now most users prefer to see the energy and changes in the biofield in real time. So for that you'll need a webcam or a video camera which live streams. So webcams live stream into your computer and through the BFR program and you'll be able to see energy and changes in real time. Point to consider with webcams is that they're lower resolution than high resolution still cameras. Try and get a webcam with as high resolution as possible but as I said we do recommend the Logitech. The higher the resolution the picture the more information you'll have in the image. Coming on to video cameras now we recommend video cameras with firewire for best quality images. You can get firewire through cameras with firewire through eBay and you might need to put a firewire port on your laptop. Having said that you can get good imaging with other types of camera, video camera, but they might not be able to live stream and I'll mention that again in a minute. But generally video cameras which live stream enable you to see energy and changes in real time. Also, they have the ability to record footage for later playback and processing through BFR. So you could just record footage on your video without any filters obviously on it and then play that through BFR program and try applying different filters. Some people like still digital cameras, they're portable, they've got an inbuilt light source and high resolution images are possible depending on the capability of your camera but one point to consider is that still digital cameras don't live stream 
so you'll miss changes in the energy in real time. As I just mentioned, your video camera must be capable of live streaming so that you can see things as they happen in real time. But most modern video camcorders record to an internal storage system for later playback, so aren't capable of live streaming. But however, you can still save the recording and play it back later through BFR as an MPEG movie file, apply the filters, and then you can save this filtered movie and have a look at it that way. Just like to talk a little about webcam settings. Here's a picture of the Logitech again, which we recommend. It's got lots of useful functions such as backlight compensation or BLC. Make sure that's on because you get a much clearer, better quality picture with more differentiation of colors. Put the sharpness on maximum. That will give you nice clear images. Make a note of your zoom distance, especially if you want to do comparison scans so that you can replicate that. You can also change the exposure level depending on the lighting conditions and the zoom distance. So if you've got not very good light, you might want to increase the exposure level. Or if you've got very bright light in a small room, then you might want to decrease the exposure level. And again with zoom, zooming in will give you more light, zooming out will give you less so you may need to ex change the exposure level accordingly. And just to mention here that Biofield Reader has a function for brightening images which have not been taken in optimum lighting setup. So maybe your lighting's let you down, you've broken your fluorescent tube, um, so you can brighten the images through the program. Or if you've taken images in low light conditions, it might be from choice, but that functions there to help. Now a little bit on video camera settings. Again, put the BLC, the backlight compensation on. Make a note of your zoom distance if your camera has numerical values for that so that you can replicate that exactly for comparison scans. And again, you can change the exposure level depending on the lighting conditions and the zoom distance. Some video cameras can live stream and save footage on the tape at the same time. You can also film and record on location and process the footage through the Biofield Reader later. Now some users like to live stream, apply the filter so they can see what's happening in real time and grab still images and also by recording onto their videotape at the same time they've got a record of what's happened and they can play it back through the program again, see if they've missed anything or apply different filters. If you want to take photos to process through BFR we recommend that you use a digital still camera. We don't recommend using a mobile phone for a few reasons. One is that they're not always high resolution Another thing is that you'd have to have a very steady hand because it hasn't got a, a way of fixing onto a tripod. And also, maybe it doesn't look very professional taking pictures of people with a mobile phone. Advantages of a still camera, it's lightweight, portable, has an inbuilt light source and can take high resolution photos. Of course, that depends on the capability of your camera. Some people like to get started with a still digital camera so that they can get used to using the program and they don't have to worry about setting up the lighting. So it's a quick way to get started. Use a tripod and use flash. Tripod's best as it ensures you get a steady sharp picture and the tripod you can always place that in the same place and at the same height by measuring it or marking something on the floor for comparison scans and the flash is convenient because you don't need to set up the lighting. One big disadvantage of the still digital camera is that you can't see the biofield or energy moving in real time so you could miss things but it's a good way to get started. Just a little bit more about still digital camera with flash. Again make sure that the camera is lined up with the subject 
that also applies to video camera too. The light from the flash must be brighter than the ambient light in the room to get the best effect from the flash. So don't have sunlight streaming in over the subject or a, a light bulb brightly shining. Try to get rid of those. And if you already have sport full spectrum lighting switched on in the room, don't use the flash as you may have too much light and you'll get white out. Still digital camera settings. We recommend that you set it on flash. You disable the autocorrect settings. Set it on the highest megapixel setting so that you get more resolution. And make a, a note of the numerical zoom distance. If you're going to be taking a lot of photos at one session, you may need to adjust the size of your images according to the memory capacity of your camera. Or, of course, you could take a few pictures and then download them off of your camera onto computer. Just a little bit on where do you set the camera up. So you want to set it up in line with the subject and make sure there's room for the camera to be in line with the light and subject when you're arranging your room. On the left we can see we've got light on the ceiling in line with the camera which is on a tripod. Here we've got the light on a T-bar and we've got a webcam here standing in front of the and in line with the light and in line with the middle of the subject and you can see the wires going off here to the computer. You can also get some um, light clamps, sorry camera clamps, which will fit on the side of your light stand. So it's a clamp that goes on your light stand, put the camera on it and you can also adjust it up and down for different shots. You can get those online. You've seen this already in the lighting setup if you've looked at that tutorial, but it's just showing you that you need to have your camera in line with your light. Here we've got an angled light on chains. Camera's in line with it. The subject's here and the camera's in line with the subject. So this could be your video camera or your webcam on the tripod attached to your computer with the Biofield Reader software so it can live stream through. Another lighting setup again, your webcam or your video camera in line with the centre of the light which is here on the T-bar, attached to the computer, subject stands here. I thought it was worth mentioning, um, if you're using still camera with, if, with flash, ideally you need the plain background and you need to block out all extraneous light. But if you've, say, got a room with a couple of windows and you can't block them out, maybe you're on location, it'd be a good idea to place the subject here so that the light from the window here and here isn't falling on them. If you had a window over this side, best to block it out with curtains. Have the subject stand on mat if you've got one. Have them standing against the wall. Have them about 1.2 to 1.5 metres, that's 4 to 5 feet distance between the camera and the subject. Again you'll adjust the height of the camera for different shots. You can mark the position of your tripod, so if you're going to be doing comparison scans you know exactly where everything was and you can measure the height of the camera. One other lighting setup again, this is an angled light on the light stand but again the camera is in line with the light, in line with the middle of the subject standing here. If you'd like to know more about the Biofield Reader online course just go to the website biofieldimaging.com slash training and you can see more information there on the course outline student resources, student assessments and Skype sessions or you can email us at inquiries at resolutions.org.uk and certificates are awarded to all students who successfully complete the course. I hope you found this tutorial useful. You can always email us if you've got any queries. Do have a look at our website biofieldimaging.com. There's lots of information pictures, tips, case histories on there. 
Also our blog spot, Biofield Imaging blog spot. Again, lots of case histories. Interesting stuff on our Facebook page. And if you look on our YouTube channel, that's Resolutions Research, you can see videos of scanning sessions, um, experiments with crystals showing the energy moving in real time. So that's it for me.